Welcome to Man Talk TV. This is Franco from Suited Up Manila. We are uh, having a featured guest who's a PhD from Milan, an MBA from Madrid as well. She's a leading female anchor for business and finance, a writer, producer at One News Philippines, the first woman to grace our show, uh, our dear friend and Suited Up brand ambassador, Danny Loren. Hi, Danny. Hi, guys. Thank you, Franco, for having me. Oh, it's such a pleasure, no? And, um, well, we just want to ask you a few questions. Uh, I guess the first would be, uh, you know, one of the big issues today is mental health. Um, what are you doing to, like, kind of maintain a level of sanity during this lockdown? Okay, so that's a really great first question. Um, and I think every person has their own coping mechanisms. Yes. And it's a matter of understanding what works for you. So I guess I have to yeah. caveat by saying, you know, don't just try what I'm doing because, you know, that's what works for me. But yes. I think generally at the beginning, um, you know, I'm a person that needs to control stuff and I love to plan. And so this yes. just throws that out of the window, right? When you live with yes. your routine, especially when I, you have kids and everything yes. is micro-planned around that. Tapos wala ng school, your work, etc. So everything gets yes. derailed. Um, yes. first, the first thing I did was to really take some time off to process. Um, I even got off social media for like a week, I think for the first okay. part of that lockdown because I couldn't handle it. It was really the, a, a tough world. Like, there was so much negativity on social media. There was so much negativity on news. I had to stop broadcasting for kaagad. Like, they just right. informed me the day before, you have no more yeah. show. So all yeah. of these things just piled up. And, you know, trying to cope kaagad, um, I couldn't really handle that because how, how yeah. do you uh, easily adjust? So I had to take a step back. And then yes. just reorganize my life quietly without the noise. So I think okay. I did that really well. And then I was really, you know, going through phases of what should I do with my routine? Because there's a whole question of, do you continue the way you did things before? Do you yes. adapt na now? Is this a temporary situation? Um, and then I think after like three or four days um, of different experimentation, I realized what, what really works for me is to be able to control like, just focus on the things you can control and be pragmatic, diba? Parang at this point, um, it's useless to, to think of the future, to be honest, yeah. and, and to try to be stressed about that. So I really had to say, okay, things are going to change. We're not going to just sit here and wait for stuff to become perfect again. Let's see what we yeah. can do right now. Um, and so right. I did everything I could do on, you know, on the basis of pragmatism. So I just volunteered. Like literally, I volunteered to do my broadcast. I said it's not yeah. going to be the same, but I'll do what yeah. I can. I'll try. I tried for a 10 minuter then it became a 15 minuter then it became, you know, now it's a 30 minuter So every yeah. day it's just changing all the time. First, it was just me. And then I got two other people on board and then three. And now we're actually mounting up the show. So I think, you know, but yeah. yeah. first was, how to cope with it is don't, yes. um, yeah, don't, it's it's not about, you know, it's the new normal, you have to do things in a certain routine. I think it's just right. like adding li little layers um, yes. to what what you can do right now. And so that's been helpful. And, I, you know, it's a process every day. I don't know when you have yes. kids, um, yes. there's, you're, sometimes you progress na, and then it's okay, the day was great, and then you feel derailed again, you know, when, right. when things are hard, and you have to understand that they're also going through so much. Like, they don't go to school, yes. and that's their identity. So, parang, you know, for but example, my broadcast well. is doing... Oh, oh, they understand, and they're trying their best to cope with it also, diba? But they're emotionally clingy, they've lost their friends, it takes them so much effort to make friends, tapos you'll pull that away from them. So in that sense, it's you know a balancing act because my my broadcast is doing well now, but yeah. then the kids, you know, so there's it's just always going to be be that way. But I think yeah, um, maintaining a, a routine that's not yeah. so rigid is Correct. I suppose the, the best way to, to go through it for me. I think yeah, I think you said it best because uh, the structure in the beginning uh, I think is very important and critical. Because there has yeah. to be a certain level of routine uh, in the beginning and then um, definitely become more flexible because uh, there's a lot of uncertainty out there and you know you just have to like do things on the fly sometimes but uh, yeah. it's better to plan than not to plan at all, right? Um, yeah, and uh, another yes. thing that I, 
parang kasi now it's the time, ba? Everyone's into Zoom meetings and then you want to yeah. keep in touch with everyone. So there was also yeah. a couple of weeks where you just want to message everybody and you feel you, you need to do that. Um, yeah. I think over time, which I did, I checked on everyone in Europe yeah. and wherever, all your groups of friends, grade school, high school, yeah. whatever, Zoom meeting, in Uman for all. Um, and then now I think I'm really just sticking to one group, you know, okay. that yeah. I feel like, I don't know, for whatever my high school friends, but I, I just want to stick with these like group of 10 people, siguro, and they're yeah. the ones that I'm now doing my workout with, that I'm talking okay. to every day. And That's I guess, good. yeah, yeah, it makes it parang yet social in a way, but not overpopulating also your social calendar when now yes. you know, you're in isolation. So there. All right. Okay. Over and segueing, I guess, to your work. Question here about being, you know, one of the leading uh, financial service broadcasters in the country. What's it like to cover the movers and shakers in the country? Uh, and is there a consensus, I mean, from what you've been uh, hearing um, on the current outlook and the pandemic moving forward? Well, the second question is like a million dollar question. <laughs> but the, for, on the first yeah. question, what does it feel? I'm, uh, I feel very lucky. Um, the fact is, you said like I'm the best. I don't think I'm the best, but, but the truth is we're so few. So, you know, I'm happy to be, I think I would say we're only like three or four news yeah. anchors doing business. And that's it's unfortunate. Really a yeah. mm-hmm. It's a niche and I wish it were in. And we've been pushing for much more anchors, much more news on this business. But the truth yeah. is like, you know, our economy, and it shows how much our economy is because all of the big businesses take the bulk. You know, there's, I cover 30 listed in the index, which are the yeah. biggest companies that run the show, run the whole country. Um, and in that sense, it's great because all the events I'm invited to, I'm really part of, like you said, the movers and shakers, the ones that create not just the private sector, but they change policy. You know, these people right. have power right now. You can see it that the, the private sector is changing their stuff into hospitals. They're pitching yeah. in in medical supplies, you know, like you guys are. So it's our country is like so intertwined in terms of policy. Right. They're the ones, the banks are the ones making, making the calls on what the you know, financial institutions or financial inclusion should be. So in yeah. that sense, it's great because I'm part of a network that calls the shots, not just for their own private businesses, but for the economy as a whole. Yeah. And people are truly, truly, they care talaga about how you know, they can improve the lives of everybody and not just make profit for business. So that's one thing. But I okay. have to say, like, I wish I could cover much more uh, because 99.6% of the volume of businesses are SMEs, diba? are MSMEs. Yes. And these are the ones you don't see in the news. Um, these okay. are the ones okay. that okay. don't have the big events that I host. Um, and this is still the, the main engine of our economy. And I still, there's such a huge lack and need for us to cover that. Um, and in that sense, parang, like you said, it's a niche. It's great that I have super smart viewers, but I really yeah. wish parang I would have you know a bigger coverage to have viewers that care about smaller businesses and, and okay. that target yeah. these sort of things. So so in that sense, yeah. And then your second question, is there a question? Well, yeah, the second question um, uh, was about um, basically uh, what the consensus is uh, from these movers and shakers. I mean, what, what are they kind of seeing moving forward uh, and how are we going to be dealing with you know the new normal so it's really mixed and it depends on the okay. industry um yeah. one thing i think that uh, is a black a wild card is consumption yeah. people yeah. don't so in the previous crises kasi, like you know the financial 2008 financial crisis even sars so we've been through a lot naman. what yeah. happened was that the filipinos just bounced back you know, so okay. we tend to like, we, it's in our culture, eh? we love to eat out, we love to spend, yeah. it, it's, it makes us happy as a people, and we're a young demographic, so we're really the right. mall goers, we're not like, you know, Italy or France, nah, they don't go out, they don't spend, they just like to stay home, that's not our demographic. So a lot are yeah. really saying this is going to save us. Um, we are strong and healthy and young and yeah. we want to live life and we love, you know, socializing is part of life. And so we're going to eat out and we're going to take those risks. Um, but others are saying maybe not, you know, so it's really a matter of questioning yourself. After this, 
are you gonna yeah. be spending? Are you gonna be you know going out to the mall? Are you gonna are you you know dying to get your life back? Or are you right. gonna change? And are you just gonna start staying home? So are gonna you just be gonna like start a, walking? It's gonna be like a measurement of if you're uh, risk averse or if you know uh, oh, depending oh. on your risk appetite talaga on if you wanna go out and risk it you know for the sake of something good or whatever. Yeah. You know? Which is a wild card, but a lot are saying that it's gonna be B. Like a lot are saying that pin- Pinoy's in particular yeah. are yeah. gonna like consumption's gonna gonna hold. And then there's mm-hmm. some like, uh, like you said, like I said, per sector, you know, obviously properties it's gonna be difficult time. Um, but there's still a lot of sectors like the BPO industry has yeah. been always resilient. Um, okay. and even now, now, like what they said in the crisis in two thousand and eight. A lot of yeah. stock closed offshore and they would move. This is the time when the BPOs start coming in. Another yeah. thing is like the English, you know, English teaching online industry, right. stuff like that. Education yeah. online. We've been doing yeah. this for, you know, decades. Na parang we're the ones actually having this platform na here. So people that will stop studying abroad might start tapping into you know, our sort of features. So there are some bright spots here because now we're service oriented and view oriented. Um yeah. and that might save it. But yeah, I guess it's really a matter of containing containing the uh, it's really you know, the health protocols and yeah. and whether if we get that fixed, in yeah. theory it sh- it should be okay. But yeah, yeah. a lot, a lot hinges on, on whether right. we put fix that first. Yeah. Correct. A lot of women look up to you as being a very independent and uh, an ind- very independent person and your ability to comp- comp- compartmentalize and manage your time very wisely. Um, uh, you have a PhD uh, in finance, uh, you teach, and you're a broadcaster. Uh, would you have any advice or words of encouragement to our viewers, not just for women, but for men as well, who have achieved such a, a lot of things definitely at, at such a young age? Uh, wow, thanks for the question. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, compliment. Um, I don't know, I'm just winging it also. It's not like I have a perfect uh, structure. But I learned yeah. a lot. Um, first of all, you know, I, I lived in many, many different countries and I had to yeah. be very independent at a young age. So I think, you know, I was forced really into doing things that I wasn't trained for, um, okay. that I had to do. Um, and a lot of like a lot of this is about preparation and planning lang talaga. So I think it's really, I'm just a, such so used to preparing for things. Na parang even if it's the smallest thing, it's not like a big deal. It's not, I know, I'm really going to spend hours just to do something small. To prepare. You know, yeah. To prepare. Um, because I've, I've always felt na parang preparation has saved me through everything and, and makes you good at, at everything. And um, in terms of like balancing, just a practical thing, there's this like philosophy yeah. that I like, which is in France, which is called the cadre. So it's a frame and it's the way okay. that they live life. The French, if you see the French, it's like they work really, really hard. Huh? Their economy is really good. But yeah. then they live life as if, you know, they're like drinking wine all the time. But actually, you know, and they manage to balance it. It's for me, it's like a perfect balance between the good life in Italy, for example, and like a fast-paced New York kind of style. And they have a camera also for kids, wherein you have clear uh, boundaries and limits on what you want to achieve and what you want to do. Um, But within those, you're free to make decisions, right? So So there's still some level of spontaneity. Yeah, yeah. So just as an example for my life, it's really like I, I need to leave you know, Mandaluyong by 3 p.m., by 4 p.m., by 4, 4 to 6 is really the time for the kids. Between the time that I'm there from, I know, 6 a.m. that I'm on the road till 4, I don't care. I don't micromanage the day. I can eat out. I can do this. I can do several types of work. Um, but that is my work time. And yeah. then, but 4, I'm done. You know, like I don't compromise on the on the frame, let's say. And then okay. with the kids, I also don't compromise. It doesn't, like in my head, I know... Uh, we don't have to, you know, plan, micro plan. We just bring our bags and go somewhere or go to okay. wherever. Uh, weekends the same. You know, weekends yes. is really like that. But no matter what, I'm going to do something, but I don't know what I'm going to do. So I think it's an, a nice way to, to live life, um, yeah. to have certain boundaries that you'll say no to things outside of that. But within that, go lang. Like, okay. enjoy your life. Uh, I mean, really, really good advice. No? I mean, we've seen... 
uh, some of your posts also on Instagram where uh, you guys you bring your children to like different places around the Philippines and expose them to different learning uh, learning locations where you can learn more things, um, especially in the uh, more rural areas. I mean, how could you could talk us through a little of that and how that goes? I mean, as a as a parent. I came back actually, so I left when I was 20, diba? and and yeah. I had the kids abroad. And there, like, wala, you don't care where you go, which is you know a luxury. But then I realized there's so many places here, so nearby, that are so accessible, so inexpensive, so yeah. safe um, yeah. that people just don't they don't see it they don't outside about, yeah. their box. They don't yeah. you know know about it. You always go to the nice five star resorts. You don't go to the other resorts. And, and so yeah, so I think it's really yeah, and it's not even super intentional. It's really just my interest. It's like I have no right. interest to go to places where everybody else wants to go anymore. Uh, I really have a. Yeah. I mean, my kids are gonna see that anyway. So I really have a, an interest. I re, it's just like a curiosity of mine. But I'm here in the Philippines for I don't know when. I haven't been yeah. here for more than a decade. I'm gonna right. look at every place that I didn't see growing up, you know, or I'm gonna revisit even. Things like Port Santiago, you know, like yeah. revisit these places that we never appreciated and appreciate it now because otherwise, when am I, when are we ever going to do it? And now that my kids are here, it's just yeah. the perfect time to just relive the whole Manila life in a different, okay. different lens. The next question would be about, um, well, of course, you are a uh, brand ambassador of this of Suited of Manila, and, um, you know, we'd like to ask, uh, how you know? Um, what's your take on women suiting up? Uh, do you see it moving forward as something as a trend or a fad? Um, and uh, is it something that more Filipina women should be doing? And why? I love suits, as you know. Um, I am in love with suiting up. It's like so. I love tradition that yeah. gets adapted to the modern society, diba? Right? I, that's really something that Europe has done so well. You keep your traditions alive, okay. but you adapt it to how it is today. And yeah. wearing a suit, in my opinion, is one of the best, you know, the most elegant traditions. You have craftsmanship. You have a long line of whatever people that have worn suits that even if you don't need to wear a suit, in theory, like why, you know, why? But you wear a suit because it's been there for so long. And the way to, you know, make something so traditional current is by including, like you said, like women, you know, adding to the mix of what a traditional suit should be. So now you don't need to just wear a suit in a corporate setting, which is what it was, diba. Um, yeah. Or it used to be such an elite thing to wear and just a yeah. man's thing to wear. And the way yeah. to break that stereotype of wearing suits okay. is to make it available to women, to make beautiful prints and bright colors and sexy yeah. designs or to LGBT or whatever you want. And, you know, that elevates that level. And another thing I love about suiting up yeah. right now is, like I said, it used to be an elite thing just for corporates. And, you know, now okay. if, if you let a person wear a suit who... Yeah. didn't grow up in that society it's such a nice vote of confidence for them you know it's like you're allowing a person to elevate their status and and i love that but i love giving that confidence to a person just by what they wear so you yeah. know this advocacy you have of like you're suiting up people for their job interviews okay. that one yeah. thing brings so much like to a person you know yeah. um allows them to feel what what other people that could afford these expensive suits before yeah. um, feel and that's why I love it like also your idea of making it you know, ready to wear more accessible yeah. having two lights yeah. so you don't have to compromise the elegance of it um, yeah. but you're adapting to the times I think is, is fantastic and so I'd love you know I'm happy to be the ambassador and I'm happy to, to show like to parang play the game of wearing the suit but I'm the woman <laughs> in the room <laughs> and I'm gonna yeah. wear the suit the way that I wanna wear it diba? Okay. And, and that shows my personality and not having to adjust and wear all black like all the men so it's it's yeah. fantastic it's a great time to, to be wearing suits so like when you wear the suits uh you know with uh these influential men and women who you interview i mean so you're in a suit uh what is there like a different feeling is there like uh i mean uh usually women wear like dresses and 
uh, you know, all of these things uh, during these events. But now, you know, suiting up some more, uh, does it make a difference? For sure, because we're really taking the control, you know, we're really taking something. First of all, you're making things gender fluid, right? Like, why yeah. does, why does only one thing, why do men have to wear a certain thing and women have to wear a certain thing? I okay. mean, and we don't have to have these sort of distinctions anymore. If I want to wear a suit, I can. If a yeah. man wants to wear a pink shirt, he can, you know, or okay. I don't know colored black nail polish so yeah. that that just that first step is already yeah. making a stand that there's no distinction that needs to be done um, when you're wearing a suit and right. but it's a nice way also and i believe it it's a nice way to to be solidaire you know to show that yeah. i'm part of like, i'm gonna interview you i understand your opinions i'm completely at your level and okay. you know i don't need to to be anyone else i can play your game but i'm okay. going to play it my way so i think it's yeah it's it's absolutely nice it's, it's uh you feel like you took the power in your hands and you're in the you know you're with the big boys um doing what you want basically so okay. no it's it's very powerful could you share your thoughts with us uh on equality and the responsibility of people to each other, especially at this time? That's so, so hard and I struggle like with this issue talaga sa Pilipinas um, yeah. because I was in Europe for such a long time and you know I've said this over and over in my post, parang there, rightly or wrongly, you don't feel guilty over the inequality and you do in a way but you always feel like you know you can, a poor person or a person from a disadvantaged background could, in yeah. theory, naman, go to a great school, go to the best schools, okay. there will be scholarships, and they can always end up as a CEO. Like, it's, it's a possibility. It's a dream. It's, it's, maybe it's, it's a bit within harder. Reach. It's within reach. It's maybe much harder for them, of course, because they have glass ceilings, my connections, but not like here, na parang no matter what yeah. you do, means and, and that really disappoints me because I really see and now I'm in media pa, so I'm reporting talaga on the news. I'm really yeah. in the grit of it. And even in my, you know, my own society, my own colleagues, etc. Yung parang ang talino nila, they're so much smarter than so many people I know. And no matter yeah. what they do, you don't have the connections, you don't have the, the means. Um, and that really bothers me, like, on a day-to-day -day basis. Parang, how can I help them? And it's like, how, you can't save everyone, diba? And you have to, okay. you have to choose, choose your battles. Um, but it's changing a little bit, but really, really slow. And I okay. think that, you know, how are, what's the only thing? Like, what's the only, like, what's the hello hanging fruit? And it's really education, diba? Yeah. If that gets solved. So one, I think there are two kasi. So one is, and those are really also advocacy. So one is education. If everyone simply has access to education and that becomes the main discriminating factor, diba? Right. Um, then it doesn't matter where you come from. And that's Agreed. changing little by little. Like now nga, we saw the, the bar pastors. I don't know if you've seen yeah. them, but yeah, top yeah, yeah. 10, none, none from UP and Ateneo, the right. top 5 were women. Parang, wow! Finally, diba? Like, finally, yeah. Nagka level na. So those are the first steps talaga to be taken. We can't like, you know, it's not about getting all the money from the rich and giving it to the poor. Like, okay. I also believe then, you know, charity is good, but also you need, charity is only useful if it helps them help themselves, diba? So yeah. the people need to yeah. learn, learn skills. The only thing out, you can yeah. do it, not just a dole out, it's even like the, the opposite nga, but syempre now it, these times it's hard, but you need to make charity in a way that they are learning. So the charity needs to be directed to things like education, like literacy, financial yeah. literacy, which you know I, I'm a big advocate for. So education is one. Another one that you know I, nowadays I'm really looking at is as a leveler yeah. is te technology. You know yeah. they just said if everybody just has access to strong Wi-Fi, and Correct. you know that doesn't become a barrier. That is that alone will change everything in this country. Correct. Diba? If yes. you just have the free information, there, yeah. the information will be there. The way to have, I don't know, financial services will be equal. The education yeah. levels can even be more equal. Because now nga with the e-learning, yeah. na yung the poor people don't have freaking internet. So how can you, okay. the, the only the NCR people can have e-learning. 
you know, yeah. about the kids in the provincias. Wala na, like they're, they're never gonna have it. So those two things, siguro are the low-hanging fruits. Um, yeah, I mean, it's an e- unequal society. We are becoming richer and richer every year as an economy, but this yeah. this is still not trickling down. But there is a growing middle class um, that is being elevated because we have OFWs. A lot of the remittances are going and making these people middle class. But yeah. also, we don't want to have to rely on remittances to make a middle class. Right? We don't yeah. want to like send people out for us to have. But that's, that's siguro the band-aid solution. Right now, the yeah. BPO sector and the remittances is what's creating our middle class. Once yeah. that middle class is created, hopefully those sectors don't need to have to, you know, keep our economy afloat. Correct. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, you were involved in a number of advocacies. Could you like share them with us? Uh, I know you teach uh, financial literacy to different uh, individuals in different countries, actually. Uh, maybe you could share some more of that. Sure. So I, siguro, I wanted to advocate everything, but I can't. Yeah. Right? If there anything, siguro, it's just what is linked to my expertise because I'm in finance. It's not as if I'm like, oh, I want to be like Miss Financial Literacy Advocate. Di talaga. Like, it's just like, I guess it's what I can do. So why not? Um, so I guess three things that I'm really into right now. So Finlet, um, yeah. education, higher education, particularly in Europe, because again, it's okay. what I did. It's what I can yeah. contribute to. Um, and this just female gender in you know corporate setting. So just increasing the women in, in business, I think is yes. already an advocacy in itself. So yeah, so for the Finlay, I just stumbled across it long like 2010. I was yes. myself an OFW in Milan and I was doing a PhD and I felt very lost and you know I didn't have a community. And I thought how how can I find a community? And I just found this program called uh, Ateneo LSE, which now has more than 3,000 graduates. These oh, are wow. all OFWs in domestic work. Um, yeah. And they have to commit to an eight-month Ateneo-led program, okay? Wow. High wow. level wow. with professors wow. like us, rigorous, because these people will work hard if they need to work hard. Right. And if, so if, that's if, what if they're we really did. serious about it, yeah. Exactly. So yun, nagpupuyat yung mga yan. So the classes would be Saturday, Sundays from like 8 to 5. Um, yeah. Two weekends per, per month, for eight months. Yeah. So that's their program. And after that, they have to create a business plan. And they have to defend it to a jury. So really, and then they might not graduate. They can graduate. So it's really not a wala lang charity yeah. literacy Correct. thing. It's like a, yeah. a real program. And the modules are financial literacy. Um, at social entrepreneurship, so hindi lang making a business, but making a business that makes an impact, and leadership. So these these three these three things. So that that's where I basically started that. And because you know Ateneo has a really good art, it's called Senti, and they're really into microfinance and FinLit. So I have a lot of resources for that. So yun, so that was my main advocacy. I didn't want to do na, you know, one million other things. I just wanted to focus on let's let's have that student. So we're in more than twenty countries. Um, wow. And that continues. Good. Now we're tra- we're trying to figure out how to do the e-learning, na rin, now, because yeah. you know, yeah, because these are the OFW, so these are the ambitious cream of the crop Pinoys, you know, that that are leaders in their countries basically, and that helps them, you know, that makes them more confident, and that it okay. we realize it's not about how many business you create after, but really about how empowered the Pinoys feel after having yeah. been educated. Just that I'm little, sure the tools, you know, it's yeah, the, the tools, the tools will definitely be able to help them moving forward, and because they are able to get like uh, definitely a larger sum of money abroad than here locally, then uh, they would need to take care of it. Because if they're not able to take care of it wisely, so it can so easily run out. Exactly. So yon. So for for them that have the money, like you said, and we have this culture of padala. And we don't yes. want to question kasi nakakahiya kasi pamagkin mo ka mag-anak and you need to, yes. you know, teach them how to wisely use these finances and money. And now we're also doing a program for the families naman that are based here on wh- how to spend remittances wisely. Yeah, so not for yes. the OFWs anymore but the ones here. So that's for Finlit. And then, yeah, like you mentioned, the, the, the other two is really just like European higher education. There's so many okay. scholarships available. So I'm the Goodwill Ambassador of the EU Delegation for Higher Education here. And 
also for the French Association because so many Pinoys are just are not taking advantage of the free scholarships that the EU is just dumping on us and nobody wants to take it. You know, so I think there's no excuse talaga. And during my time when I went, I was lo- I had to find means and ways to go abroad. And now yeah. people will do it for you. There's programs, there's Erasmus Mundo. So there's so many it's people that more, have studied in Europe. Yeah, now that have degrees, my God, they're just smart people that really just work hard. Um, you don't have to be rich to be able to study there. So I think that's something, a stereotype that I, I really want to break. Final question, uh, Danny. Uh, any message? Uh, you know, any learning that you have uh, that you'd like to impart with our viewers uh, regarding this lockdown? And you know, once it's over, I mean, uh, uh, what are what are we supposed to do? I mean, what what advice can you give uh, in that regard? Um, so you know, I read a lot. I've been reading a lot on like philosophy books and and how yes. to do and all that. And uh, and one thing that I've learned is that you know, I know it's so it's so much easier said than done, like not worrying about the future and being present, mm-hmm. right? Um, but that that is really like something that we need to understand. Like we we are so averse to change. And the one thing that makes people miserable is their fear of unknown and the fear of change and being taken out of, of a context, right? Yeah. Um, and what the Stoics are saying is like, why are you so afraid of that? That is life. And if you learn to accept that life is this, suffering is part of life, losing loved ones, heartbreak, sickness, this is part of life. You can't expect life to be a, you know, a happier, just a road that's of happiness, right? You need to have a meaningful life that is full of happiness, of pain, of anger, of difficulty. And if you accept that, that this is this is life, um, then your mentality kind of changes. And one thing I guess I've learned also, um, it's just you know the the difference between being happy, having having a happy life, and living a meaningful life. Um, which in Europe, you know, I was talking to people, and and I always say this in my talks. Parang in the Philippines, kasi we always just want to be happy. We want to block out. Any negativity. That's why people don't want to listen to the news because they don't want it. They just happy news lang yung lalabas. And that's not but the right way. But happiness is sleeping in a way, right? Exactly. And in Europe, I was like, Grabe naman, these people are always so miserable, complaining. And I was like, you know what? In the Philippines, we're just happy. I just want to live a happy life. I don't want to like bother with misery. Which is a, you know, a nice thing. And then my European colleague said, well, that's not my goal. My goal is to live a meaningful life. Like, even, I'll take risks, even if that makes me unhappy for a while, you know, because that's part of my life. Like, and, and you know, having, like, little things like having children, you always think they're going to make you happy. No, that's not it. That's not why you have children. You have children for the tough times. You have children, you know, to make your life more meaningful, more interesting, to make you question things. Um, so I think there. So in this period, this is precisely that. This is life. Yeah. This is... And it's all how you deal with it, and it's all how you accept that this is just part of a journey of the many years that you'll be like on this earth. So yeah, right. so there. <laughs> I'm not I waiting for it to pass. I'm just yeah, I, trying to like ride the wave. I mean, I think uh, having this time for us to reflect and think about, you know, what's important is really something where we can try to repurpose also our thoughts, you know, um, and. You realize that I guess time is the most important uh, factor in life, you know, and we just have to make definitely what you said a meaningful life for all of us. Go yeah, ahead, one last thing that I that really just saved me, and you're yeah. doing the same thing is just helping people, diba? Right? Like yeah. doing what you can. But um, what what's can, the point yeah. of working so hard and earning money when you if you can't use the money that you've saved up for and work hard for to make a difference in the time, the precise time that it needs to be done, diba? Right? So okay. sure, we're gonna like get salary cuts, we're gonna have business issues. But so yeah. what? Parang that's why you made profit in all these other periods. Para these periods, okay. you, you can, you know, take that out and do what you can for society. And I think that's like, what is the number one thing that people need to understand about this? Okay. Hey, Danny, so thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it and all of the thoughts and all of the ideas that you shared today. Um, uh, God bless you and stay safe.
Thanks, Franco. Peace to all you guys. I miss you all.